everyone. Um, I'm going to do a series of videos to keep you going while I'm away um, and um, in this tutorial I'm going to take you through uh, the basics of glazing um, just so that once we've got stuff through the kiln and fired um, we're ready to go and <clears throat> we can start putting um, stuff through the kiln quickly. Um, the ideal would be when I get back that we've got a couple of shelves of glazing that's ready to go. A note on that, the kiln is ready. I'm going to be doing a test firing um, this week. Um, assuming all goes well, then I'll start putting um, items through so that hopefully um, you will have some bisqueware um, that you can start uh, doing some experimentation on. Um, so first things first is the setup. Um, your surface covered in newspaper because glazing can be a very messy business. Um, you'll want to have a um, container with some water and a sponge, um, a bucket of water, um, some spare uh, brushes, dish, dish brushes that are in the storeroom, um, and um, your test tiles. So some of you made a whole bunch of these um, during one of the lessons. Um, those of you who haven't yet made any, um, the ones that have made won't need to use all of theirs. So um, just share them amongst yourselves um, if you wouldn't mind. We can always make more test, you can always make more test tiles and they can get fired when I get back and um, you can then do more experimentation um, with your glazing. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do, dust is the enemy of glazing, before glazing and after glazing. So before you glaze, you just give it a quick wipe with a, uh, a damp sponge. Now you don't want to saturate your, um, your piece, your test tile or whatever it is you're glazing, because glaze is formed with a whole load of raw materials mixed with water and then suspended in that water. Um, the when you put the glaze onto your pot, um, the bisqueware absorbs all the water out of the glaze and just leaves a powder on the surface. And that powder is a combination of all the glaze materials in equal quantities, more or less. Um, <clears throat> and um, those um, that uh, the water that's in the pot. Um, then needs to dry off, it needs to evaporate out before we can put the piece um, into a uh, firing. Um, as we have discussed, um, anything that's wet, when it goes in the kiln, it will explode. So, um, and you also, if you're going to do some experimentation with glazes, then you don't want to have your items so wet that you can't put glazes on them for an hour because they're trying, you're trying to dry them out. So, I've um, put a damp sponge over this um, test tile um, and I'm happy now that it's uh, free from any dust and now I'm going to get my glaze ready. Now I've got several glazes here that I'm going to use today and I'm going to do some combinations of, um, of different glazes just to see what happens. So the first thing that I need to do is to prepare the glaze. Now, um, I don't know how well that shows, but if you open one of the buckets of glaze in the storeroom, you'll see that there is a layer of water that has formed on the top and the glaze materials have sunk to the bottom. To a very large degree, there will be a little bit um, of uh, material that is um, still suspended. So what is very important is to remember that there are some materials that are heavier than others and will sink faster than others. Um, if you don't get all of those materials off of the bottom of the bucket, then your glaze recipe is no longer correct because you're missing a key element um, out of your uh, glaze. So it's really important to make sure before you use a glaze that all of those particles, all of those raw materials have been suspended in the fluid. And in the first instance, especially if a glaze has been sitting for a while, it's about getting your hand into the bucket and breaking up lumps. So in this particular bucket, 
I can feel that there are clumps and lumps of the raw materials um, that have stuck to the bottom. So I need to make sure that I get all of those raw materials out before I can even start thinking about doing any glazing. So glazing is not something to be rushed. It's not something that you're going to do in five minutes and get on with something else. Um, and it's also, it's, it's important to be aware that it's not for everyone. I had a student last year who told me um, at the end of the term that she wasn't going, she hadn't put her name down to do the class again for another year because she didn't like glazing. Um, and I, I said to her, that is such a shame because you don't have to do glazing. If you try it and you don't like it, you don't have to continue with it. There are lots of other ways of incorporating color and surface um, texture into your pots other than glazing. So if you give it a try and you decide that you don't like it, then just come and chat to me about it and we'll, um, we'll see what we, what we can find as an alternative for you. So now that I've, I've um, broken up the large pieces in the bottom of the bucket, I'm now going to use the brush and get into... The lovely thing about using these brushes is that they get right into all the nooks and crannies of the bucket and um, help get all of that fluid suspended, uh, all of those materials suspended. So. As you can see, it's, it can be pretty hard going, and once I've got everything off the bottom of the bucket, I can then get um, I can then get the um, stick blender and use the stick blender to make sure that there aren't any clumps of glazed material floating around in the fluid. thing I want to do is end up inadvertently putting um, this color into um, another bucket of glaze using the stick blender um, that hasn't been cleaned. So now that that glaze is ready I have a book Sorry about that. Um, I have a glazing book and I've given all of you a book that you can use to make a note of your test tiles um, and, and all your glazing of your test tiles, of your wares, everything. So in the, the first thing that you need to do is get yourself a paintbrush. It's a very thin paintbrush. <laughs> 